Okay, okay so, yeah. what happened? Yeah. Where, where the hell did you do that? Yeah, so <laughs> in order to explain that, let me back up a little bit on the real estate. Um, okay. I started, I bought my first rental property. I bought my first house in 2012. It was a townhome. Mm-hmm. I ended up moving into that house, living in that for a number of years. Mm-hmm. And then o- over the years, I bought more doors. Right. I bought a fourplex. I bought another townhome, bought a mm-hmm. condo. And so I, I'd experienced what... Um, different elements of, of real estate. Condo, okay, I can know what to expect here. Brand new build, a townhome, higher end townhome, mm-hmm. this type of clientele, a fourplex, okay, multifamily, there's some benefits here mm-hmm. and here's how you can grow that and make money. And I just learned by doing these small little chunks, right? Mm-hmm. And it's not the super exciting crypto investments, <laughs> right? It's slow and it's boring, but now I look back and I go, okay, yeah. you know, from 2012, 2022, this has grown. It's got this amount of equity in it. It's been paying its bills, all of the different benefits of that type of real estate. Yeah. But over the last couple of years, I've been looking at a different uh, category in real estate, and that's mm. lower income, uh, single family. Single family has the potential to, I think, do the most appreciation. Mm. Um, but different markets also have different benefits. Mm-hmm. The East Coast, the coasts, they're going to bank on appreciation. They're not cash flowing. They're probably mm-hmm. losing money on rent every month, but they're banking on the fact that the value of that property is going to go up mm-hmm. because it's on the coast. Yeah, right. Right. Um, but then, you know, in the, in the Midwest or in the South, you can get uh, a higher cash flow. Yeah. but you're going to have a higher turn when you, you're going to have to evict more people. You're going to end up having to do more rehab, things like that. So there's just trade-offs. Yes. But I wanted to learn about those different things. Right. So you're, well, talking about, you're talking about the difference of like, there's cash flowing markets that you have to look into. And then there's the equity markets. There's like the appreci- this, yeah, yeah. Appreciation markets. Yeah. Okay, okay. And awesome. then, and then there's also the different types of cash flow. You can get a higher cash flow percentage, mm. but you're going to have other trade-offs. You're going to have more rehab when, when somebody moves out. Talking about potentially like Section 8 housing. Yeah, housing. Section 8 housing, yeah. lower income, mm-hmm. right? Um, High however, cash flow, but very, yeah. Yeah, a lot of problems. Yeah. So I started looking at those different things, and I, I, I was looking at some in uh, in the Midwest, um, in Kansas City a couple of years ago, and then I, I went and looked at a, a, like 19 houses out in, in Arkansas, and I toured them. Isn't that and called Arkansas? Arkansas, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, and I started learning about this, and I was like, okay, look, you can get some – you can't – People come from California to Utah and they think the real estate's on sale, right? I go <laughs> from like, Utah, I go from you. Utah to, to Arkansas and yeah. I'm like, ooh, real estate's on sale. Mm. But I didn't love the deal. It didn't feel like we were getting below market mm. on that deal for buying 19 of the homes. Yeah. So I, I had mentioned to a, uh, another friend of mine who's in the real estate space that I was looking at those, asked if he had any experience. He's like, yeah, I actually do this in Alabama. Mm. And I've got a number of rentals out there. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm thinking about getting back into it. I said, well, if you see anything, let me know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm interested in that. The key to, to buying outside of the state of Utah, which was my first leap, is you got to have a really good property management company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Especially when you're buying lower income, there's a lot of turnover. You've got to be able to trust them. And that's the key to you having success. Because mm-hmm. I don't want to go and manage all of this. And I don't want to deal with all those headaches. And you definitely can't own 60 homes mm-hmm. and be responsible for running all of that right. if you want to have do anything else with your life. Now, with single family, it's about the property management company. But with multifamily, you kind of have your own property management inside as like a business, right? You can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. you can, depending right. on how big of the multifamily, right? My right, fourplex, right. it doesn't, right? True. Yeah, but yeah. it just depends. Okay. Um, and so uh, a couple weeks after uh, I got back from Arkansas, my friend goes, hey, I found a portfolio mm-hmm. of 60 houses. Okay. Okay. So that's where we're getting into this now. Yeah. So he found an entire portfolio. Yes. Okay. Found an entire portfolio of mm-hmm. 60 houses. Um, it was actually 59 houses and we wanted to have a round number. So we went and bought a, a 60 uh, <laughs> and, and, and folded it in. But he found this portfolio of 59 homes in uh, Alabama. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm, I'm in. Like if you, if there's an opportunity for me to be a part of this with you, and he said, absolutely. Um, and so we decided we were going to partner on this, put it under contract. We flew out there and we went and toured all 59 houses in one day. Um, it's literally like street after street after street within we're within a couple miles, all wow. of our houses. So we'd okay, walk so up the street and be like, Oh, area. that's our house. That's our house. That's our house. That's our house. Wow. Whatever. Um, so there was a bunch of different streets, but it was, you know, three, four mile radius. Um, and, uh, we toured every single one of the houses. We met the property management company that was managing them. The, the property management company, uh, uh, the real estate agent that was showing us the property was the owner of this portfolio. Oh. He had been acquiring them, buying them at a lower price, mm. rehabbing them, putting renters in them, accumulating for a number of years. Wow. His reason for selling was, I've got equity and I want to cash out. If I, For him, he could make about a million dollars, and a million dollars in Alabama goes a really long way. Mm. And so he's like, hey, I, I'm ready to pull out here. But they're cash flowing and they make a lot of sense. Um, 
and he was also a part owner of the property management company mm -hmm. that was running it. Mm -hmm. And so they were running this, this, uh, this deal. And my buddy had his properties out there with another property manager and he'd been through three property managements. So I felt more comfortable. Hey, if we have a good relationship, good contacts out there, we could, we could go into multiple houses. We had, a good, yeah, we had yeah. a good setup. We had somebody we could trust in that. Mm. And so, um, the deal made sense. Uh, now we needed to find financing for this. Mm. Um, and so you don't want to go get 60 loans. Mm. You don't want to be dealing with 60 different mortgages. If, if you've ever bought a house, you know how big of a pain in the ass it is to go and get a, a mortgage, right? Mm. Yeah. All the different things they request and, and going through all that. So there is a product out there. There's an opportunity out there. And this is what I think a lot of people are like, how do you do 60? You can get what's called a portfolio loan. Okay. That's what I was going to ask you because how do you find portfolios as opposed to just buying up individual homes. So you're talking about portfolio. It's, loans a, it's a commercial product. So the first thing I did is I just went and put on social media and my story, I said, Hey, I'm looking for a commercial lender that'll do a portfolio loan on a number of single family homes. And I didn't know that it had even existed, but I put it out there. Multiple people respond and said, Hey, and I got probably 20 contacts, right? Wow. Started working through those different ones. We found a, we found a company called Corvest who does these portfolio loans. There's different regulations, different requirements right. that different ones have. They want them to be contiguous. Like you have to like literally own the entire neighborhood. They have to be all connected. Uh, um, just different requirements, right? Um, minimums, maximums, whatever else. And so um, we started working with them mm. in order to get this. You're going to, it's a non-recourse loan. Mm. So there's some benefit there, but you still have to prove your ability to, to mm. buy it and everything else. Mm. Um, what I brought to the table was my balance sheet and my, um, mm. I got us qualified. I did the loan under my name. Mm. My buddy had found the deal. So that was kind of our, uh, value exchange. For That's this usually deal. how something happens. There's the funding partner, the working partner. So yep. he had the network. He was able to find it. You provide the financing for it. Like that's, yep. that's very typical, especially real estate, right? Yep. Yeah. And then we, and then we split the the down payment on it. And oh, so, wow. okay. So, okay. That, wow. So what I did is I went and I took two of my properties. I had seven doors. Mm. I took two of my properties and I sold them. Mm. Uh, I'd owned one for three years. I'd owned one for uh, eight years, mm. tons of equity in these with mm. the market we were in. Oh yeah. Especially now. I was able that. to take those two doors 1031 exchange. So take the profits from those, roll it into this and come out of pocket with about $200,000 more and go from two doors that were cash flowing me about $1,500 a month to 60 doors, which I own 50% yeah, of right. that was cash that's cash flowing me between uh, eight to $12,000 a month. So I went from 1200 to $12,000 a month by rolling those two properties into this. Jeez. And uh, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> crazy when you look at the economics. That is nu that's nuts. And that doesn't make sense. Because you went from like Utah homes to buying, you know, like homes in Alabama. Average home, $60,000. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I didn't buy 60, you know, half a million dollar homes. I yeah. bought $60,000 homes. But here's the benefit of this type the of product. The cash flow is the high. The cash flow is high. We're going to mm -hmm. have to evict people. Yeah. We're going to have maintenance. We're going to yeah. have those different things, right? These are three bedroom, one bath, 1,100 square foot homes, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and uh, probably eight of the 60 are on section eight. There's some pros and cons to section eight. You get paid automatically. The, the government pays it, right? That's true, yeah. The downside is that they come in and they have certain requirements mm -hmm. of standards you have to uphold. And right. they can be really expensive mm -hmm. compared to if you're managing them yourself. So we don't have to renew section eight. We can find different tenants. But mm -hmm. um, the benefit to this is they're higher cash flow. Also, how much, how many houses are there still on the market in the $60,000 range? Mm. Sub 100,000. That market is drying up. So the say, opportunity yeah. for appreciation, typically you don't buy this product for appreciation, but the opportunity in the next five years for those $60,000 homes to be $100,000 homes mm. is actually really likely. Wow. So I could get a 50, I could get a, you know, 100% appreciation rate in five years. That's 20% average a year. You don't get that in the market, no. but there is that opportunity. And if you can buy it with mm. leverage, there's, that's even more powerful. That's what most people can't get on those portfolio or on those type of products is a portfolio loan, but we were able to do it with our, our balance sheets and our down payments and everything else. And so what we're, our plan is, is literally to cash flow these. Um, you know, when people move out, we might make some, some additions to them sure, we can yeah. paint, you know, appliance, whatever else, and, mm -hmm. and increase the value of them forced depreciation. Mm -hmm. Right. Also, we can sell, we can sell smaller packets of these to somebody mm -hmm. and we can own or finance them. Wow. Since we we're in at a, a great cost, we can come in and say, "Hey, I'll sell it to you for seventy five thousand dollars. You put twenty five thousand down if you can't get financing, and we'll owner finance that for you. And now we can leverage that. So we have a lot of different options wow. as far as what we can do with mm -hmm. that product. Yeah. But I think the most powerful thing to show people is like not buying. You know, I, I, I'm I'm all about the different buckets. Yeah. The, the moonshots, the different things. But real estate is always going to be one of my low risk mm -hmm. in my bucket um, value driven yeah. investments because. I was able to take two doors, 
take the equity from two doors that I was patient with that I just rented and, you know, coupon clip $1,500 a month from, and I was able to roll that, avoid taxes by 1031 exchanging mm -hmm. that, come out of pocket with, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars more, but I was able to go from $1,200 a month cash flow to $12,000 a month cash flow. Mm -hmm.